Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be looking at how to do an RNAV approach, which is a type of non-precision approach that you can fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm going to explain how to load and fly the approach in a Cessna 208, but the concepts I'm going to look at apply to most general aviation airplanes in Flight Sim. I'll discuss some of the flight planning aspects you need to be aware of in Flight Sim, and then I'll fly the approach itself and I'll explain how to interpret the chart and make sure that you're following all the different procedures that it lays out. I'll spend a bit of extra time going over the minimum section and go into a little bit more detail on decision heights as requested by subscriber Steven Sandwell. This is either part 5 or 6 of my IFR series. If you haven't seen those already, you might want to start there since this video somewhat builds on the concepts I explained in those previous videos. More specifically, you'll want to be familiar with how to tune frequencies in the nav radios as well as be comfortable flying an airplane in IFR conditions using nothing but the instruments. And while not strictly necessary, knowing how to use the autopilot for these types of approaches can be really beneficial and save you a lot of the workload that you would have to do manually. All right, let's get going. All right, so the first thing I've got to do is set up my flight plan just as usual. For this flight, I'm going to be landing on runway 27 at San Diego International. It's one of my favorite approaches in the game, especially when you're coming over the mountains and then you're quickly dropping down to sea level to get down on the ground. It's not particularly scenic, but it is pretty cool. As usual for my IFR flights, I've picked IFR low altitude airways. If you were flying an airliner, you'd probably end up choosing the high altitude airways, but since I'm flying generally smaller airplane, the low altitude is more appropriate. I've set my departure airport to be Imperial County just to do a very short hop to be able to show you how to fly the approach. For my arrival into San Diego, I've left it as a direct approach. I could choose one of the different arrival procedures, but I don't want to focus on that in this video. You'll notice though there are two different RNAV approaches for runway 27, the Y and Z approach. The Y approach that I'm going to be flying today is a GPS based approach that can be flown in almost any airplane in flight sim. The Z approach on the other hand is something called an RNP approach which stands for Required Navigation Performance which is going to lay out a bunch of different requirements for you to be able to fly that approach. I'll go into a little bit more detail on this while I'm flying the approach down to the minimums. Speaking of airplanes, I'll be flying the Cessna 208 for this flight, but like I was saying, you could be using any airplane with a Garmin GPS glass cockpit in it and you'll be able to fly the approach no problem. If you're flying an airplane like the Cessna 152 or the Cessna 172 which only has steam gauges, you won't be able to fly this approach since it really does require the GPS to be on board. I've zoomed in a little bit more on the actual approach section which is the part that's shown in purple here. We can see the different waypoints of the approach up here, but if I actually go into the filters and I turn on fix and RNAV, we'll actually be able to see them on the map itself. The waypoints that you see here are going to match exactly what you would see on the actual chart from the FAA, which you can get either from airnav.com or from FlightAware. And with regards to that, let's have a look at the nav log. In the nav log of the approach, you can see that when I'm starting my approach at Lindy, there is an altitude listed here, and each one of these subsequent waypoints also has an altitude listed. The altitudes that are listed here are going to match what you would see on the real chart as well, and they're telling you how low you can descend on each particular leg of the approach. Once you get past Rebo though, that's where you still need to consult the actual chart because you won't be able to figure out what the minimums are from this flight planning screen. All right, with all of that set, I am ready to start my flight and fly the approach. I'm getting close to the initial approach fix where I'm going to start coming down for landing. But before I get to that, I want to remind you, if you get some value from this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I'm flying with the default G1000 with no mods installed and there's a few things right off the bat that I'm going to point out that don't work. You can see the waypoints on the multifunction display when I press on the flight plan button but as you can see there are no altitudes listed for each one of the waypoints. That's not too big of a deal because I can always reference the real chart that I either have on my second screen or I've printed out but it would be a nice little fix for them to do. Another issue to be aware of if you're activating the approach while you're already in flight, the computer is going to get confused and it's going to make you want to go back to your previous waypoint before starting the approach. To get back on track, you have to go into the flight plan, you have to scroll down to the next leg in your approach and press the activate leg button at the bottom of the multifunction display. 
Or if you just want to avoid all these issues entirely, you can just install the working title mod for the G1000 or the G1000 NXI, and a few other little bells and whistles are going to start working as well. I'm not using it in this video though, I'm just using the stock version. I was flying with the autopilot in nav mode, but now that I'm past the initial approach fix of the approach at Lindy, what I am going to do is switch to approach mode on the autopilot. If the step down altitudes had been listed on the flight plan there, I would have expected it to step down automatically from one level to the other, but it's not doing that right now and I have to adjust my altitude myself. I'm going to do that by using the altitude select knob to get myself to the next waypoint, which in this case tells me I can be down at 4,000 feet. And I'm going to use vertical speed mode to get down there. There's a really quick way to know how quickly to descend as well. You can have a look at the estimated time on route on the right hand side of the multifunction display and then figure out how many feet you have to lose and choose a feet per minute that's going to get you there at around the time that it takes to get to the waypoint. Each of these waypoints, by the way, in an RNAV approach are coordinates on the ground rather than being transmitted from a land-based transmitter. I've also reduced power to approach for my airplane, which in this case is around 800 or 900 RPM for the descent all the way down to the runway. I'm also keeping an eye on my airspeed so that I don't get too slow or too fast. When you're adjusting your altitude with vertical speed, it's pretty easy to end up either too fast or too slow if you're just making changes to the vertical speed without making a consequent power change. I repeat the same process for each leg of the approach all the way down to the final approach fix. I'm going to look at the profile view of the approach to see how far I can descend, which in this case is 900 feet. And then I'm going to look at the estimated time en route to that waypoint, which is around 50 seconds. So I'll end up using probably around 800 to 850 feet per minute to get me to that waypoint right on target. Once I get to Rebo, which is the final approach fix on the chart, a few things are going to start happening in rapid succession. As I'm in approach mode, you're going to notice that suddenly there's going to be a glide slope that's going to come alive and the autopilot is going to take control of our altitude and start intercepting that glide slope. This surprised me at first because RNAV departures aren't supposed to have vertical guidance, but in some cases there is a glide slope that does become available. I'll explain why it's doing this by looking at the minimums listed on the chart for the approach. You can see there are three rows there, one that says LP and another that says LNAV and the last one that says circling. LP and LNAV are two different types of RNAV approaches. LP stands for localizer performance and is the equivalent of a localizer approach that you could do with any airplane in flight sim. LNAV stands for lateral navigation and it provides you with, as it says, lateral guidance to where you're going. The navigation system automatically chooses which mode it's going to use, so you don't have to worry about that. Normally you would see what type of approach it's doing. Inside of the compass where it says en route, it should instead say either LP or LPV or LNAV. LPV, which stands for Localizer Performance plus Vertical Guidance, is the mode that's actually going to give you a glide slope. This glide slope is 100% calculated based on your GPS position, so it's going to know for every point over the ground what altitude you should be at. This is in contrast to an ILS approach or even a localizer approach where it's going to be transmitted from just beyond the threshold of the runway. Now, in theory, I'm flying an LP approach here since there is no LPV listed on the chart. My understanding is that even in an LP approach, there can still be a glide slope that's going to appear, but it's more of an advisory glide slope. On the Z approach to runway 27, on the other hand, you're going to notice the MDAs are listed as RNP 0.1 and 0.3. This is a different kind of approach procedure that in the real world requires authorization to fly it, and you need to have specialized equipment on board as well. I wasn't able to find much documentation on if the G1000 should be able to fly these approaches, so if you have any thoughts on that, feel free to put them in the comments below. In this case, I'm going to end up flying to the LPMDA, which is around 680 feet, and then I'll have to make a decision. If I can't see the runway, obviously I'm going to have to execute the go-around procedure, and if I can, I can just continue down for landing. I tend to disable the autopilot once I get either to the final approach fix or once I get to the MDA, depending on how choppy the weather actually is. In this case, I disabled it a little bit earlier just by the final approach point. Just to make things a little bit more interesting to fly the airplane down to the ground, I can follow the glide slope if I can't quite make out the runway landing lights, and in this case, I can. 
So I really just have to fly a normal approach down the runway, making sure that my airspeed is good, slowing down to my final speed that I want to be landing at, which is more like 85 knots and making sure that I'm staying aligned with the runway center line, which is a little bit of a challenge in this weather because there's a little bit of wind blowing from left to right. And that's my quick overview of our nav approaches. There are a lot more details I could have gone into, but I really just wanted to give you the bare minimum information you needed to fly these approaches, and then you can dig in a little bit more as you like. If you got some value out of this video, please make sure to hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next video.